Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Harika. So in the playlist of RE framework till now we have seen what is RE framework, why we must use RE framework and I have given a complete high level understanding of how RE framework operates. And we have also seen uh, what is what is in it all setting XAML file and each and every part of that code is also explained very clearly. And if you have missed any of such any of those videos, you can check it out in the RE framework playlist of my channel and you have you can can also view what are assets and how we can create assets in orchestrator and how we can access them in the studio now with all this knowledge we are good to go with this part four of RE framework like how we can access those assets which are there in the orchestrator from the config file in RE framework so let's see uh, and I would be covering these four points which were mentioned on the slide so in which sheet of config file we have to place assets especially of the type credentials and why we must place only in that sheet and what happens if we don't so I would be taking up a scenario and I would be explaining it and what happens if we don't place what error we would be uh, facing that also I would be explaining and along with that uh, we can also see how to access assets throughout the project in the RE framework and get from orchestrator the values of assets listed in the assets sheet of the config file and if suppose when you're working in a project where uh, the value of uh, the credentials or the URLs if they keep keeps on changing so how we can change those values without touching the code so we can discuss all these points as a part of this video so let's get into that part so in the previous video we have seen in it all settings till reading the settings and the constant file and now we are going ahead and seeing get orchestrator assets in the same in it all settings so for that we have to read the assets sheet same like how we have done here for the two other sheets and this would give you a data table output so for each row in that data table i'm using get orchestrator asset so this would retrieve me the value of the asset so before to that let me just log into my orchestrator So we have created two assets here. One is URL and other one is the credential. You can check it out from my previous video. So I have to declare this URL in the config file of my Hari framework like this. So I have to take the asset here and the value, this name can be anything. By using this name, you have to access it in your config file, in your project, sorry. So I'm taking this value, I'm copying this value, closing this, saving it. And now, when I'll just debug this so that we can check the value, what is there. So if you just observe it, I'm taking row of asset dot to string. So this would retrieve me whatever the asset in this value. Let me just open the config file and show you. So this would retrieve row of asset, that means gmail underscore url so this will be the asset name like how we are giving the asset name exactly now we are using in the form of the data table and whatever the value is there that would be retrieved and pulled it into a set value variable and that variable we are passing it into a dictionary which is pointing to row of name row of name comes under this one so we are assigning whatever the value is there in asset which is gmail.com that is pulled and stored into gmail url which is the name that we would be using throughout the project so let's execute and debug this and i will show what output we will be getting under this oh i should close this excel file So now I have to get the value into this variable. So for that, I need to do step into. And now I can check the value here. So what is the name of that particular row? Gmail URL. 
so if you just observe gmail.com is stored into this particular string so it's just like that we are using the asset name in the config file and that name is retrieved the value from this is retrieved and given to asset value and we are pairing up in the form of a dictionary with respect to the name of that particular asset where we are storing it into so this is how we can retrieve the values from the assets so this is possible in the case of the data types called as text but what is with respect to credentials so how we can pull credentials so let's suppose I would do the same thing like how I have done for the text. I would take Gmail cred. So here I have my asset name as Gmail cred. Let's see what happens if I give like this. So I would place the breakpoint here and then debug it. So if you just observe, it is throwing an error. It, it says invalid asset type was specified for the asset. So we cannot use get asset. We have to use get credentials. So these are of both different types. So what I'm going to do here is that we can follow a simple way. I'm just cutting it and I'm storing it in the settings. And now, what i'm going to do is once after i load this file let me just put a breakpoint here and i would debug this one so now by this time we can see the whole program has got loaded and now I would be requiring the value from credentials. So if you just observe, we have got the Gmail cred, which is the asset name. So now what I'm going to do is so we know the credentials we would be using anyways in the while logging into the applications. So after init all settings. So this is the workflow for init all settings. So after this, we would be discussing about queues. But before to that, how to retrieve the credentials from asset. So for that, I would be using init all applications. I would be going into init all applications. And here I would use get credentials so for this particular asset name i can provide okay so let me just show you what is the argument that i am taking as an input so here i have in config so in config is of type dictionary in already we have in in it all settings from here we are getting it as an output so out config is the output that is pointed to config so from here when we are loading settings and the constants by this time it has already already read the credentials that we are provided in the settings and the constant sheet so from there i'm using in config gmail cred dot to string so this particular value is already read in the settings and the constant settings sheet of the config file and that would be set as an output from init all settings so that particular value i'm using here as an asset name and this great get credential will return a uh, and username and the password so we have already seen this in the previous video if you uh, haven't watched that just go and check it out so that it would be easy for you to understand what i'm doing exactly so now i am taking a uh, username 
and we know that we have the secure password as an output so we have secure string password and now that i can read that particular value from here i'll just take it off and then i can see the username from here so i would just i kept a breakpoint already here and i would just run this in the debug mode and after reading the assets we're going here for the username and by this time it has already retrieved the asset username and the password so i would check the username here which shows harika.uf03 at gmail.com which i have provided here this one and we should all we can also check the password but as i have shown you this will be encrypted so we cannot see the actual password but the length we can check it out here so like that it will work so we have seen till now in which sheet we have to place the credential type and why because we are seeing that we are getting an error uh, what type of error it is it is it is of we cannot place that uh, credential because of invalid type because we inside that assets sheet we have get assets but not get credential so that's where we using the get credentials inside the in it all applications and after which we have seen how to retrieve the values from the config file in the assets sheet and how to access that throughout the project in ari framework so now uh, we have got this str username so this variable you can pass it as an output argument and you can ret let me just stop this for a while and you can use this as output argument and you can mention as output if you wanted to use this somewhere else in the project so you can use this as our output argument and you can just come out from here and in init all applications you can just see this is an output argument that we are passing and here just declare a variable so using this variable you can access it throughout the project so you can just declare it so that it will not throw an error okay it shows name already exist so then it would it wouldn't be throwing an error here fine and now that's how you can use it throughout the project so let's suppose when uh, there is a change in the username or in the password so in that time you don't ha you have already deployed the project but you if you wanted to change the username going forward so you can just come over here and you can just change that particular value in the asset let me just see in gmail.com also let me just take it as gmail.in so now i would be debugging this again so we haven't touched any part of the code we've just changed the values in the assets and i am checking this particular value from here in the immediate window okay first let me just get inside it so that we can evaluate that value so if you see gmail.in without touching any part of the code we can change the values just by editing it in the assets panel and now i would be going to username and here i can check username also i have changed so initially it is uipath 03 and now it's just uipath and also the password also i have given different password anyways we cannot see the password here but we can just 
check if the length is different. Yeah, correct. So that's how we can work on assets. We can set, uh, we can uh, get the asset and get the credentials and we can place them in the config file without editing anything in the code. We can use them change them in the orchestrator and we can access them into our studio. So that's all about assets guys. So next uh, going forward, we will be seeing queues because uh, the next thing to let me just show you in the framework. We are at the initialization part. We are done with init all settings by this time. And now we'll be going ahead with queues. So I would be showing what are queues and what are different types of queues we have, how we can trigger and how we can schedule the queues and different ways of scheduling. Also, I would be showing. So if you like my channel, go please do subscribe and like the content and share with your friends and do not miss any of the future videos. Please do subscribe and stay tuned. Thank you so much.